Hello there, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to be taking a look at Snapship's tactics and we're going to be focusing on how to play. Now this is a tabletop skirmish dogfighting game, uh, similar in on some ways to games like Star Wars X-Wing, uh, but it has a very unique feel. It's got that kind of build and play fun factor and we're going to be talking about how to play this game. You may have seen me talk about this. They had a Kickstarter that was very successful. Uh, you've seen unboxings and some build videos that I've done. I'll put links to those if you want to see a little bit more about how to build some of these awesome, awesome ships. But what I haven't gone into yet is the details on how to play. So I'm going to focus in this video on how to play Snap Ships Tactics. If you like this and you want to see more, definitely click that subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see next, because we do have more videos planned for Snap Ships Tactics. There is going to be quite a few of these very cool game and I am delighted to show you a little bit more about it. So also check links in our uh, video description before, uh, down below. We're going to have some social media links, uh, discord links, all kinds of good stuff down in the video descriptions. Don't miss that. Let's just dive right in to how to play Snapships Tactics. Snapships Tactics is a dogfighting game of moving around the battlefield and shooting. It's typically played on a three foot by three foot area, so many standard space uh, three by three play mats are going to do the job just fine. Uh, if not, you can always just mark off a three by three area and uh, and play and have a good time with that. Uh, it's going to use the Snapships ships on these bases, and they come in a variety of heights, and they have a lot of different sections are marked, and we're going to talk about those and uh, how you move and shoot. You want to reduce your opponent's hull to zero. You can play with multiple ships. Uh, you'll, If you do play with multiple ships, you will uh, alternate activations until all ships have activated and then start a new round. Uh, but if you're playing with just one ship per side, like you would have in the starter box, then you will just alternate going back and forth. Movement in this game is going to use this very simple double-sided movement tool, uh, and it's going to be as simple as this. Uh, you will line up your, your, your indicator to a line, and then you can rotate your ship uh, up to one movement increment, uh, and that's how turning works. And then to move, uh, you will simply line this up to either a, the S for a short move, uh, and put the base over top of that, like so. And we'll do it sideways here. And then this is how a long move works. It's as simple as lining it up to the L for a long move and then uh, lining up your little indicator there. And they actually have a little lock-in mechanism where you can kind of feel it. You can feel the locked in right there. You don't, I don't, you don't have to make the sound effect, but there we go. Uh, so all the types of movements, whether you're turning uh, one, one interval uh, or multiple intervals, uh, then you can just certainly do that again. Uh, all the turning you want to do is done this way, and uh, and all the movement you want to do is this way. Now, whenever you're turning, you do not have to do the full turn. You can always stop somewhere in between. So if I wanted to turn uh, to my right here, I might just do a half turn if that's going to maybe get me away from some obstacles or prevents a collision. Now, obstacles in this game actually do wonderful things. So if I manage to move, on to an obstacle, I am going to get different types of effects, and they're going to do very cool things. Uh, one of those things might be to uh, give me a free anti-missile shot, asteroids. Uh, the idea is you're flying through asteroids to help you, you know, evade the missiles that might be heat-seeking missiles that might, might be homing in on you. Uh, these are double-sided. Uh, a debris cloud here uh, can increase my evasion. I'm sort of hiding in the debris, and I'm harder to hit. The symbol is the symbol for evasion. We'll talk more on that in just a moment. Uh, we have a rift that lets you do an extra long movement once you land on it. And then we also have these clouds which help you remove uh, blue or red energy cubes. These are going to be very, very important. We're going to talk about these in just a moment. Uh, the other thing that's important about these is the different types of dots that are going to be around different terrain features. If you have these dots like here, this is uh, going to increase your evasion by when you're attacking and if you are uh, have the the longer dotted lines kind of the uh, dashed almost looks like rope uh, that's going to reduce damage by one so basically you're out kind of getting a little bit of cover from those asteroids now there are two factions in the game there are the complex and the forge uh, they are kind of like the good guys and the bad guys or the blue and the red or if you prefer the good guys and the bad guys you know depending on your own 
point of view. You're going to find that many of the faction identities in modern gaming depend very, very greatly on your own point of view. Uh, this is the ship card for a Scarab Claw Interceptor, and uh, this is a very iconic, uh, I believe this is the Scarab that you will see on, in the box art, so I went ahead and uh, had this one assembled, and, uh, and these are very cool too. I mean, if you haven't seen me already talk about how you can put these together in other videos, this is totally modular, so every, uh, every upgrade and every piece uh, that you put on your ship, you can physically put on your ship, and building these is a whole whole different thing. It's, it's very, very fun. Okay, so uh, looking at the Scarab Claw Interceptor, uh, this is a lot of information we're going to get here. First off, this is our hull. This is how many hits until we are blown up. Hull is going to be tracked on these little dials here, as well as our evasion. This is an important value that uh, you know, that is going to make you harder to hit when we start to getting into combat and shooting. Um, and we're also going to have our starting energy. This is going to be, it means we're going to have seven blue cubes on this card. That's how we're going to power all of our guns and uh, engines and all that, of that other stuff. We have a ship's passive ability. And then we have uh, the ship's basically start of turn bar here. This is all the things that you are going to do, uh, that you're going to have to do. At the beginning of your turn, this is one of the first things that you do. Uh, then you're also going to have other additional things that you can do because you're going to have different upgrade abilities here. You are allowed to equip six upgrade parts to this ship. A cockpit, an engine, uh, a wing, and then three uh, auxiliary pieces. And these are usually going to be uh, weapons or some type of cooling devices or things like that. Uh, and then we're also going to have a points value because this is a points-based game. So you might uh, play an eight-point game, which uh, in most cases is two chips or you might play just a four point game or a 12 point game or a 16 point game uh, although the standard game seems to be uh, eight points currently uh, which is usually about two ships per side but uh, you definitely can go higher than that at the start of my turn uh, the first thing I'm going to do on this guy is reset my evasion uh, there are a lot of things that can change your evasion we looked at some obstacles already that can do that uh, so no matter what my evasion is it is a, got a cap of six and a minimum of zero I will uh, reset to three for this particular ship different chassis have different uh, different evasion levels uh, the complex uh, are generally a little bit more maneuverable and have slightly higher evasion. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull cubes off of my upgrades. Uh, so while I have seven cubes that I can spend, I can only pull five cubes off. And this is half blue, half red, because there are two colors of cubes. I can only take five cubes off total. More about that when we look at upgrades. Then I'm going to have a, a single click of rotation and then a short move. Now these I have to do. However, the rotation does not have to be a full rotate. So uh, while I will have to do the short move, I might only want to rotate just a little bit. Uh, so I, I can go anywhere between zero and 100% of that rotate. Uh, so the rotate is, is a little optional there, but the move is not. So if I'm about to crash into something, uh, you know, I have inertia in space. I can't always just stop on a dime and I certainly can't do that here. I'm going to have to at least do a short move. So that's what I do. Once I've completed all of these tasks, anything else I want to do is optional. And that optional tasks and all those optional actions are going to be on the upgrade cards. So let's take a look at those. All right, so I am using the default loadout on this, and there is a uh, there's a, basically a default uh, preset build, and it's actually going to be on the back of every ship card, which is very cool. So this, if you know, especially when you're first learning the game, before you want to get into upgrading cards and uh, you know specializing your ships too much, this is a great way to get you started. Has sort of a balanced loadout for every ship type. Uh, so here you can see we've got the Scarab Cockpit, the CPL-2 Mantis Laser, and plenty more. And they're all right here. I've pulled out all of their, their individual cards. Now these are all double-sided cards as well because they can potentially be disabled. So they are going to have uh, like a broken side as well. That's kind of how critical hits work. More on that when we get into combat. So uh, no, normally you would lay these all out uh, end to end because they need to be laid out left to right so that there's a number corresponding to each one, one, two, three, four, five, and six, uh, and that it deals with the chances of getting critical hits. But for this video, I'm just going to do uh, that second row right here so we can see them a little bit better. Um, what we've got here is we're going to have our seven cubes on here. And now after I've done, uh, you know, set my uh, agility, I've pulled cubes off, which I don't have any cubes on the first turn, so no problem, uh, or my evasion rather. And then I've done my move and sh uh, my turn and my move. Now I'm ready to take any additional actions I might want to take. Now a short move is pretty short, so I might want to get a little extra movement. So I may want to uh, activate this FB8 uh, tri-thruster here. Now, 
A couple of things about this particular upgrade card. Uh, I can use the top or the bottom, but I can't use this card. I can't use any of the active abilities on this card if it has any type of cubes on it. So what I may want to do is if I'm trying to get some more movement, I can go ahead and put two energy on this thruster. Now, that's, now I'm going to do what's on this card. I'm going to do another long move, and then I'm going to increase my evasion by one. Boom, and that'll put me up to four. And that's going to stay at a higher evasion now all the way until I activate again. So this is great if your opponent is going to be shooting you, which, uh, you know, they just might because that is the name of the game. Um, so now I've spent two energy. I've still got five more on my card, but I also know at the end of my, uh, or beginning of my next turn, I'm only going to be able to pull five off. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. If I if I have a lot of shots, then maybe I want to take, take some shots, or if I don't have shots, maybe I want to move around a little bit more, I might put uh, an energy on the maneuvering fence and do uh, an, an extra turn. Or alternatively, I may put two energy on the maneuvering fins and use the bottom section, which is uh, uh, two turns. So you can use either the top or the bottom, but not both. Now, let's just say I wanted to do the uh, a more complex move with my tri thruster. Let's just say instead I wanted to do the bottom section, which was a turn, a short move, another turn, and a short move. I'm trying to maybe uh, maneuver around to get behind somebody. Well, if I do that, it's going to cost me two blue energy, but then it's going to also get to heat. And heat is uh, going to have a neutral supply. Uh, I'm going to pull out two red cubes, and those are going to go on there as well. Now, the red cubes have an infinite supply. There is just a big, a big common pile for those. So those don't come from my ship's available energy. But I still can't use this. Like if I pull these two cubes off, I still can't use it until I pull these two cubes off. So it may only cost me two to fire now, but it's going to cost me four to get it ready to use again. And this is a very important part of this game is managing that power. So let's just say I did that, and then uh, and then I wanted to fire the Gatling gun. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this Gatling gun. This Gatling gun has two different uh, things that it can do. It can do an anti-missile uh, attack, which is uh, basically not firing at an opponent, but firing at missiles that are homing in on me. Or I can do a uh, the Gatling gun's main attack. Let's take a look at attacks because this would cost me uh, two more energy. Uh, rather, well, I'm pulling that from a different pile. Two more energy from my ship and a heat. And so then we're going to have a problem next turn, too, because we can only pull five cubes off. All right, let's look at combat. All right, so combat has a couple of things that we need to determine to make sure that we can actually attack somebody. First off, attacks are going to have an arc and a range. And so in this case, uh, this is going to be my front 90 degree arc, which is basically a, a standard front arc, uh, and that's going to be measured by these, these thick white lines here at the 90 degree marks. Uh, but there are some weapons that have a more narrow firing arc, like the Mantis laser, which is just that front 45 degree. So that one is a, bit, a little bit harder to hit because they would have to be in here. But fortunately for me, we're, we're firing with the Gatling gun, so we just have to have my opponent in that frontal arc, which they are. They also have to be uh, at within the proper range. Now, there are four range bands, range one, range two, range three, and range four, and uh, to do an attack, they have to be at range one. The range one is shaded, whereas uh, the Mantis laser has ranges one, two, and three shaded. There are some weapons that will not fire at close range, so being closer isn't always better, and there are some weapons that have, uh, you know, different mixed ranges. Also, it's important that if you are touching, like if you bump into another ship, you'll be considered range zero, and then under normal circumstances, you will not be able to attack them, although there are some ships that can kind of break that rule. Now, uh, our range is measured in these increments right here, so this would be range one, so this is, uh, what is this, about six, six inches or so. Um, so, so that's uh, that's range one. So, if we were within range one, if we could touch that ship, we would be golden. If there was uh, an obstacle in the way, it would be obstructed, and then they would get the benefits of whatever type of cover, whether it was you know reducing the damage or or, or modifying the attack result. There's also going to be a, a a range two tool, and to measure range three, you just add your your range one onto the range two, and then to to make it range four, you would just add another one onto that. So we can just. We could always, or if you have two starters, you could just put line two of these up next to each other. So range four is very, very far, and it's not usually very hard to, to line up that shot. But range one is a little bit trickier. You have to be very close to somebody. So 
Once we determine that we have range one, we can go ahead and uh, make this shot. Now, there's some more information here. This is going to tell us how many dice we roll. So in this case, we're going to roll six dice. Uh, each each hit will deal one damage. That's the, the number one there. And uh, the, the number here with the little bullseye on it is telling us our, our target number that we need to hit. This game rolls 10-sided dice, D10s. Right? But they are special, they're modified D10s, although you can use your own D10s if you want, if you need extra dice. Uh, keep in mind that the zero is considered to be a blank, and the nine is considered to be a critical, a critical hit. So uh, eight is the highest actual printed number, and one is the lowest printed number. So since there isn't actually a 10 on here, the zero is counts as the blank. So that's something to keep in mind for these if you're using regular dice. Uh, but I need to roll twos or higher. But I need to, but that number, is, that's my target number, but I'm adding my opponent's agility. All right, since since I am looking at my opponent here who is the, uh, uh, they are a, a saber gunship. Let's say they, uh, they have their default. They might only have two starting agility. So that's gonna increase the number I need to roll. So instead of having to roll two or higher, beat that, I'll have to roll four or higher. So I'll roll six, uh, six dice, and I need four ups to win, so this one would miss, this other one would miss, this blank would miss, but the six, six, and seven, so that would be three hits, and that would be three points of damage, and then he would adjust his dial to go from 15 down to, uh, what is he at? He would be at, uh, at 12. There we go. That's how we do math. Uh, and that would, that would be the end of that particular attack. Now, if I had rolled a critical, criticals will always hit. They're always considered to have hit. Uh, and then however many critical results I have, we can do critical hits. All right, so here is the saber. So let's just say the saber just, uh, let's say, for example, I, I did roll a critical hit against the saber. Uh, we would then have to roll and determine which uh, piece got des uh, destroyed. And so we would roll this die, and it would be an eight. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, there is no eight. So if we had rolled a one, through a six, that would determine which card got flipped over. If the roll is a zero or a number that doesn't appear on here, then the defender actually gets to choose. So that's better for the defender. If the roll uh, was another crit, then the attacker gets to choose. Uh, so you can like disable their guns right before they shoot you or something like that. And the way that, that critical, so let's just say, for example, uh, we knocked out his mass driver shotgun. And let's just say it had been, it had done an anti-missile attack, so it had some heat on it. So when a part gets disabled from as a result of a critical hit, uh, all of the cubes are going to come off. Uh, for every heat that was on there that gets removed, they're going to suffer an additional damage. Uh, you'll flip this card over. These go back on to the ship. So you, this kind of sounds good, but I won't be able to use this part again next turn because I'm going to have to repair it. And it's going to cost me its repair cost, which is also referenced here by this little hex uh, number in the hex on the front. So that's our repair cost. So this is something I can do on my following turn, but then I still won't be able to use it once I repair it because it's still going to have cubes on it. So again, you can't use a card that has cubes on it unless it's a passive ability. You can use a, a passive ability even if there's cubes on it, but you can't activate an, you know, an attack action or a move action or an anti-missile action, so on and so forth, if there are already cubes. So basically this will uh, you know, deny that your opponent the, act, the use of that card as well as take it away for the following turn when you get a critical on them. Some cards will launch missiles. Uh, missiles are a special, uh, a different action. They basically, you're, you launch missiles, but it doesn't necessarily count as an attack. Uh, they uh, they ha each have different types of effects. So each missile uh, of a certain type, whether it's light, medium, or heavy, will handle a certain way. There are basically uh, light missiles, that are have a missile quality of five. There are heavy missiles that have a missile quality of six. And there are heat-seeking missiles kind of in that medium area that uh, they're still a quality of five, but also do heat damage. What happens is when I, if I have a missile launcher uh, and it, let's, for example, launches four missiles, I'll take four missiles and I'll put them on the enemy target's uh, card, uh, provided they were in range for me to launch the missile. And so those will go on the, on the opponent's ship card, so I'll just say I'll, I'll put them there if, if I had launched missiles at this guy. Now, he has all the way until the end of his next activation to try to get rid of these missiles by use of the, uh, the anti-missile 
uh, action. Now this can come in multiple different formats. Uh, I can fire one of my weapons and use an anti-missile there, or I can try to land on an asteroid that also uh, gives me a free anti-missile action, or I can have a friendly ship that's distance one from me do an anti-missile. You can actually have uh, like a wingman try and shoot down missiles that are coming after you in a very Anakin Skywalker versus Obi-Wan Kenobi kind of, or helping Obi-Wan Kenobi sort of, uh, sort of mentality. So that's a very cool thing if you're flying multiple ships. But uh, yeah, anti-missile is important. What you'll do is then you'll you'll roll dice, uh, one for each missile that's assigned to you, and for every uh, five up you get, say if, since this is missile quality five, you'll you know destroy one of those missiles. Uh, and of course, uh, heavy missiles are harder because they require a six up. And uh, you know, there you go. Uh, anything that is left at the end of your activation, any missiles that are on there. So let's say you had disabled two, they will then uh, roll to see if they hit you, uh, and they have a much better chance of hitting than most normal guns because they start at a zero up. So then you just have to, like if his evasion is two, uh, you'd only have to roll a two or higher. And uh, wow, that, <laughs> I'm leaving that in. I'm not even gonna edit that out. My dice are so bad. I just rolled two ones on the demo. That is fantastic. So those would have actually both missed, but anything other than the one, <laughs> well, I guess any, the blank would have also missed, but yeah. So they're usually always gonna hit. That's beautiful. I love that that happens. All right. Um, so that's how missiles work. They're a pretty good chance to do damage. There are different types of missiles uh, that do more damage. The light missiles will do two damage per, uh, and then the heavy missiles will do five damage per, and the heat, the heat missiles only do one, but also generate, put extra heat cubes on your upgrades. Another thing I wanna talk about is collisions. It is possible that when moving around the battlefield, you might uh, collide with another ship or like actually overlap their base. If that ever happens, what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your same facing, so you're still gonna be oriented the same way, but you'll be able to place your ship anywhere uh, touching that ship's base as long as you're facing the same direction. And then what happens is a collision occurs. So at that point, uh, each ship will roll dice equal to their whole size value. Uh, so in this case, the Sabre Gun ship has a size value of four, and uh, and my claw, right who's over here, has is also a size value of four. So they'll each roll four dice, and for each five or higher, they're gonna deal a damage, uh, a ramming damage to the other ship. Um, and so part, part of the collision. But there are also ram attacks, which uh, are treated just like a collision, except I can collide with you after doing this maneuver, and I don't have to take any damage in return, and I just get to do this ram attack. So it's a nice little thing that, uh, that the complex uh, characters can do and so they can uh, they can take advantage of that so usually usually your forge guys want to stay a little bit out of ramming range unless they absolutely have to well one last thing i want to talk about also is uh, modifying attacks because of flanking or rear attacks so if i am this guy and i'm coming after this dude uh if i'm trying to flank him uh, that will mean that i am fully uh behind him fully not in the, the side arc here. So so if I'm like there coming out there is not fully, so I'd have to be right here. So if I happen to be completely within his rear 180 degree arc, uh, that will count as a flanking attack. And, uh, and so basically uh, he'll get kind of minus one to his evasion for that. Uh, if I am fully within his rear 90 degree arc here, so if I'm really like directly behind, in addition to that flanking bonus, I'm also gonna do plus one damage on the attack, regardless of what the dice are. So I'm always gonna do at least one damage if I've got that attack, which is very cool. Now that only applies to attacks, not to missiles. Uh, so uh, still a very, very good thing to be able to do if you can. So maneuvering is not just about being able to, you know, get within range of your opponent, but if you can, you know, take those extra wing upgrades that are gonna give you that extra movement to be able to get behind somebody, uh, you can do that. And it's also important to know that, uh, you know, your different upgrades, you can activate them in any order. So I can, you know, I, maybe I have a shot, but I want to do some extra movement first so I can get that flank attack. This is, uh, you know, I may want to just, you know, put the cubes on here first and then put the cubes on here afterwards. So uh, being able to flank is a very big deal. And since we are talking about game rules, I want to highlight one thing about the rule book here, uh, it, which is a very good rule book, but it's got a fantastic quick reference page right on the back that references every icon you're going to see. There are also uh, U-turns. Uh, that are going to allow you to do turn completely around. Uh, they're like, like basically they're called rotates, 
right? You've got uh, all the different types of missiles. There are also torpedoes that have their own individual rules. Uh, here's all the different firing arcs that can be printed out. And, and as long as your opponent's in the shaded area, that's when they, the gun can attack them. Um, all of the different terrain tile effects, your different uh, uh, icons, and then quick reference for the, uh, the course of a turn and activating a ship. It's all just on the back page. So once you start playing, if you ever need to reference anything, it's right on the back page of the book. All right, so that is everything you need to know to start playing Snap Ships Tactics. There are some more advanced rules interactions. And we're going to talk about more about this game in future videos. So if you want to see more, you are in the right spot. Make sure you click that subscribe button. You can click the bell for alerts so you don't miss out as new content comes out. We talk a lot about science fiction, tabletop gaming, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, all of the all of the science fiction. If it's got spaceships in it, I'm talking about it. So uh, very cool stuff. So we are going to be bringing you more. And I'd love for you to check out some of the other videos. I'll, be, I'll, I'll throw some links up over here. Big thanks to Lynn Vander Studios for helping make this video possible. And big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are absolutely out of this world. Thank you so much for your continued support. I will talk to you later. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Always fly to the best of your ability. And always wash your socks.